I think something we can all relate to are those times when somebody accuses us of something, well, we've never done. I remember one time my dad accused me of stealing money from his wallet. And my dad was absolutely convinced that I had taken the money. And I was furious, and I went toe-to-toe arguing with my dad, who threatened me with wrath and punishment if I didn't tell him the truth. Now imagine his surprise when my mother showed up with a bag of groceries with money she had purchased. Can you guess where she got the money from? If you guessed my dad's wallet, you guessed right. Sister White paints a picture of God's end time people. There they are. It's the end of the world as we know it. But just before Jesus arrives, Satan goes on the attack, not physically, but spiritually. And during that time, Satan is armed with every sin we've ever committed. And make no mistake, when Satan accuses a person, he doesn't have to lie. And when you think about it, he doesn't have to. I mean, after all, the Bible says we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And a day is coming when Satan is literally going to shove our sin in our face and he's going to condemn us with it. And as Sister White says, the tempter stands by to accuse them as he stood by to resist Joshua. He points to their filthy garments their defective characters. He points their, to their weakness and folly, their sins of ingratitude, their unlikeness to Christ, which is dishonored, well, their Redeemer. You see what I mean? Satan will have enough dirt on us that he won't have to lie about us. So what's a Christian to do in a situation where you know that what Satan says about you happens to be true? Well, here's what you do. Remember that Satan is talking about your past and not your present reality in Christ Jesus. You see, your past, well, you sinned. Your present reality is that Jesus forgave and removed your sin, and he has gifted you his righteousness. And let me be absolutely clear here. Christ's righteousness does not cover your sin and guilt. It replaces it. I love this thought right here. He who has been most abused by our sin is the one who says, they are mine. See, I have written their names on the palms of my hands. You see, in Jesus' home, judgment will always be given in favor of the saints. Well, that was our final thoughts and nuggets for this week. Now, we want to invite you to take some time this Sabbath to visit your local Adventist church and share with them some of the things you've learned this week about God's determination to save us. And please don't forget to join us next week as Seth will share with us some of his thoughts and insights regarding next week's lesson, the hour of his judgment. I know you will be blessed. Thank you for joining us. Have a happy Sabbath to come.